Kia ora, thank you for joining us today. Um, please, as I've said in the chat, introduce yourself and let us know where you're signing in from and who you're uh, working for. Um, We'll start off with a karakia and I'll invite our friend Vai to start us off and then I'll introduce myself and the mission of this webinar today. Um, Ko Rino Tomanga ko Fero Te Moana, um, ke te noho ana aho ke te Whanganui Atara, uh, ko Toko Mahi he kai Whakahari Kopapa at Huye, uh, ko Al Akrabi, um, Toko Iwi, uh, ko Sakhar Toko Inua. So if you've not noticed where the places are from, I'm originally from Yemen, and I'm now a project manager with Huye Community Aotearoa. And I'll be hosting this amazing webinar with some incredible speakers that we have um, in partnership with Aratayohi, um, great organization that I've had the pleasure to work with on many occasions. And uh, they're the peak body for youth development and they've helped us with some of the speakers today. So in 2021, and despite all the challenges that this year has brought, we were continued to be inspired by community leaders and innovators throughout Aotearoa. Uh, this leadership, kindness, and creativeness came from all ages, ethnicities, and had its impact in its own unique way. So in this webinar, we'll aim to highlight some of these incredible stories from our local communities, and we've gathered some incredible speakers, six in total, who will share the stories and how they've impacted um, their own communities. So our first speaker today is Savi, who is um, from Porirua. Um, Save has been involved in many initiatives regarding youth development, education, and performing arts, and is a massive advocate for Pacifica and Māori uh, rainbow communities in Paurirua. Um, she's currently a recipient of an Eva Arts Residency through Creative New Zealand, with an exhibition coming up on the 16th of December, so she'll tell you more about that. She's the chair of her founding uh, trust and recently got recruited as uh, with Inside Out as their newly appointed Pacifica Competency Coordinator for the Pacifica Rainbow Communities. Sebeya came highly recommended by Ronya and also through Aratayohe, so I really can't wait to hear um, what she's got to tell us. So please um, join us in listening to Sabe. Uh, kia ora mai tato. Um, thank you for the introduction. I'm um, quite honoured to actually be presenting here today. Um, thank you to those who recommended myself in our organisation. We really do appreciate it. Um, but I thought I'd start off with um, introducing my org. Um, so, ko ai tēnei i mua atu i a koutou, um, he uri tēnei nō ngā tukurau, me ngā te hāmoa, um, ko Sevia Nua toku ingoa. Um, my organisation is called Ngā Uri o Whititera Mai Lemoana Trust. Um, Ngā Uri o Whititera means the rising sun, and Mai Lemoana is an, a Samoan translation of from um, the Moana, from the ocean, um, referring to the Pacific Ocean. So our translation for this name represents um, the Uri, or the descendants of the rising suns of the Pacific. Uh, but yeah. Uh, sorry. Can you guys see this presentation? Sorry. Yes, we can. Oh, ngamihi. Um, our faka papa or our ngafa um, for ngā uri o whitisena. So, ko tipimana te maunga, ko kini paru te awa, ko ngā haui whā, uh, me ngā mautere o te moana nui aki wa ngā iwi, um, ko whitisera me marae roa ngā marae, ko ngā uri o whitisera me le moana trust mate. Um, ko wai mātou, um, so who are we? Uh, ka tēmata tēnei um, whakarūpia, um, i roto i ngā kura. Um, so I was a teacher at Purido College in 2013. I um, was also the one who revived modern performing arts within this kura, um, which is still running to this day. 
Um, so Ngauri Oficera started off as a kapahaka group generated out of a dominant Pacifica school, um, also a low decile school here in Porirua, um, and is still running today in 2021. Um, in 2017, I left Porirua College to pursue other further um, studies. Um, and from there on, I discovered during my master's um, that there was a lot of um, disparities and gaps within our Purido community that we needed to close. Um, from this, it was utilizing the art form of all the arts, um, cultural arts to facilitate positive youth development within um, our community. Um, from there, we generated a charitable organization called Nga Uri of um, charitable organization. And in 2021, we were um, fortunate enough to become um, a legal entity under charitable trust um, organization. Um, from this, I generated a framework called Tausi Le Fatu Natuto Ina Iatupu Maola Matungo um, which was a literal translation to the Whakatauki um, Pui Poia Te Kākano um, Kia Pua Wai, which is nurture the seed so that it may flourish. Um, so these, this Whakatauki speaks, with, um, speaks so much to me in regards to what we do for our community. Um, so in 2018, when the Talanoa happened with a lot of us, um, community um, leaders, we discovered four areas of um, disparities, which was one was the arts, um, the focus of the arts within Purirua. Um, majority of our kids were traveling outside of our local communities to pursue these. Um, education was another, um, focusing on vocational education um, and breaking that stigma of um, vocational education is only in hospitality and tourism, um, but looking more towards um, vocation in the arts, creative, or I think it's creativity, um, sports, and also community service. Um, this also looked into homework clubs, but focusing on university and tertiary students, as well as secondary. I think a lot of our people struggle in the university world with trying to get academic support um, with the nine to five jobs that majority of um, university support people have. Um, and the biggest one for me was our Rainbow um, Parody Gap. There has been no organization in Purirua um, ever that focuses on rainbow. Um, or our rainbow communities, our LGBTQIA+, our MVP FAF+, or our Takatapui, Whakawahine, Tāpui Kura, um, you know, all these terminologies, but we focus solely on Pacific and Māori terminologies and methodologies in regards to dealing with our rainbow communities. Um, our programs that we offer is Moana Creatives, um, Flourishing Garden, which is also known as E Tipu Te Māra Matauranga, which is the Flourishing Garden of Knowledge, um, or our Rainbow Creatives, and also Community Service. Um, so this is pretty much just a spiel about what we do in our everyday um, lives or in our programs. So our Moana Creatives, um, we have specific tutors that tutor our junior secondary schools and um, in our senior kapahaka groups. Um, we also have the greatest opportunity next year to teach seven schools um, kapahaka, so it gives our children the opportunity to teach um, a younger generation um, around te ao kapahaka or ngā mahi a te rehia me tāne rore. Um, we also have a big um, influx of Pacifica cultural arts um, and teaching them in the Tongan culture, Samoan, Cook Island. Um, we want to expand that and focus on all the other Pacific cultures. Um, but yeah, um, contemporary art is very important to us in Moana Creatives. It's, um, it's a way that we express, um, our kids express themselves. 
um, from their body of work that they create. We have just completed one of the um, our participants' contemporary work, which focused on um, her upbringing and her transition journey. Um, then we have one that's happening on Monday and Tuesday, which focuses on storytelling in the Tongan culture called Fananga, um, and that will be presented at Pataka. Our flourishing gardens, um, as I spoke before, focuses on vocational education and homework club for our secondary schools and universities. <clears throat> our Rainbow Creatives um, is pretty much a space where we acknowledge our Māori and Pacifica kids in um, our, our rangatahi, our Rainbow Rangatahi. Um, also is to encourage them to identify as who they are, as they see they are, um, especially for us as Māori and Pacifica. Um, a lot of us try and fend away from identifying as our own terminologies and go towards our Western terms, um, which we have no problems with, but I feel like that's another big issue for a lot of our kids trying to find who they are specifically, but without the lack of knowledge of who they pretty much represent in their identity. So our programs that we offer as our Rainbows in Schools would be um, piloted next year in 2022, um, which is just creating a space where our Rainbow students um, to become themselves. Um, we have specific workshops for each month in each school. Um, we do referral supports for whānau members who um, are religious, um, also have cultural ties. Um, we do professional development for schools. Um, I can generate resources for specific um, Pacific communities. Uh, and we also were fortunate enough to be funded from the Royal Foundation to run our Faunal Wellness Retreat for Wellington. Um, and this is for all our Rainbow um, Māori and Pacifica youth, um, aged 16 to 25. Um, community service is an area with, um, we find pivotal um, for our, um, our kids' um, upbringing and growth. It gives them a sense of community, a sense of belonging to a community. Um, and life skills is very important. Um, we offer suicide prevention skits for schools as well as organisations and community events. Um, we also support our local events like um, our VAX events that are currently happening at the moment. Um, as you can see in this photo, I was a present here, so I was in Gisborne. Um, but it displays um, some of our kids and our um, one of some of our board members um, with Auntie Jacinda and also the Tupene Fano. Um, we also do a Give Back Day every year. Um, unfortunately, COVID has been a big effect on a lot of our things that's happening at the moment. Um, and support our local artists to present their work. <clears throat> uh, keys for success. Um, these are our keys for success, and we totally believe that it generates success for our participants. Is Fano, Ainga, and community engagement, diversity and unity, cultural identity and heritage, education and knowledge, as well as um, transferable skills. Namahi, Fafitsai Lava. Thank you. Hopefully that was okay. I was so not prepared. What do you mean that was okay? That was amazing. I don't know how you do it all. Um, it's incredible. And just hearing the stories also of the performing arts. I remember my first time in Dunedin, I was invited by a good friend, Pip Lafiso, to go to the Polyfest. And I said I would show up for an hour and ended up staying the whole day. So <laughs> I love what you do. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm gonna, we're probably just gonna have time for questions after we hear from all the speakers. And this is a reminder, if you're watching, please write down your questions for any of the speakers and we'll get to ask them in a Q&A session um, towards the end. Um, thank you again, uh, Save. Um, and I'm in, gonna introduce you to our next speaker, who's Anna Parker uh, with 
Matawi Consultancy and also the Dunedin Community Builders. Anna is a good friend from Dunedin and I think just like everyone and as from the speakers that we have today, um, I don't think any of them just do one thing. They're just part of a big community and they're people that you see them wearing 20 hats depending on which meetings and sometimes in each meeting it's five hats on. And I think Anna is um, a great example of that. So Anna, over to you. Oh, kia ora. Um... Kam hinuki a koto a koena paka a tuku akua and nori poti a ho. Um, just want to acknowledge myself as being shaped by my many Pakia settler ancestors who arrived in the South Island, as well as the Fakapapa connections we continue to explore as a fano uh, to Kaitahu. So, just my warmest greetings to you all today. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to um, speak in this forum with such. Um, incredible people doing amazing mahi in service of their communities across the motu so um yeah it's quite an honor to be um in the lineup um but really today what i want to just share about is really about collective mahi um an incredible network that i'm a part of called um dunedin community builders that has evolved over time so i'm going to share my screen i'm going to remember to do that um and got some pictures to share to, um, with, along with the corridor. So Dunedin Community Builders is an informal uh, volunteer run network of, of community groups, organisations and people across our community sector in Aotearoa. And our kaupapa is really to support um, a culture of grassroots community led development in our place um, and also place based leadership. Um, we're all about elevating community voice and we also like to share knowledge of best practice and professional development opportunities or make those opportunities happen. Um, we uh, hold regular network hui and we bring together a wide uh, range of people and groups to connect and to share ideas. Um, one of the planks of our mahi um, over recent times has been to really examine and have a look at funding systems and how funding systems might be shifted to create change and to create equity in our community. Um, this whole uh, approach for us emerged during lockdown last year and it was very much a community-led initiative because we were holding regular Zoom hui and just to keep our community connected during lockdown and what we continued to hear from um, across our sector were that there was a lot of struggles um, being experienced and also a lot of fear but at the core of it what we were hearing was that it was the funding systems themselves that were uh, broken and that people really wanted to see change happen to how their mahi was funded. Um, so we thought, okay, well, we need to create kind of like a safe way for some of this community voice to be um, harnessed. And so we <laughs> sat up late one night and wrote a survey. Um, we thought, oh, you know, who responds to surveys? We'll just put it out there and see if anyone replies. And virtually overnight, we had about 40 responses from community and arts organizations across our city. Um, and for us, this really demonstrated um, how much groups were desperate for a safe venue to speak to the struggles um, that they were experiencing and also to speak to the change that was needed. Um, and the narrative we were offered um, was detailed and rich. And so we believed that it really needed to be honored um, with a report that really elevated community voice. So a few late nights later, we, um, we produced this report here, Funding for Change in Aotearoa. And I'm just gonna really briefly speak to the themes that we heard um, in this report, or what our community was speaking to, and that was that relationships make a huge difference when it comes to funding, that um, funders need to uh, profoundly value um, and understand te ao Māori and treaty obligations, that we need to fund for equity and not just for um, the status quo, because we also need to fund for systemic change. Um, that community want to be at the table in designing systems, and so collaborative models are needed, and that communities were crying out to be trusted 
rather than so much time being invested in accountability, um, more time needed to be invested in relationships that built trust. Um, and we also heard that, um, well, anyone who stayed up through the night writing a funding application, and probably many of you have, will know that anything that saves some time will make a difference. So it was systemic issues and both practical issues that we were hearing from our community. So to celebrate um, this report, we um, held a hui. And um, this hui really prioritised um, community voice. Um, and so this all, you know, this all happened between lockdowns. Sometimes when it was, we were able to, you know, meet in person, we got lucky sometimes. Um, and our um, Funding for Change hui really um, provided a platform where our funders came, they came to our table, they sat with us, um, but that our community members were the, were the speakers. They were able, so it was their voices that were being elevated and prioritized and that everyone was needing to listen to their stories and their struggles. And it was an emotional hui, but our funders listened and um, both, both governance and operations around funding, different funding groups were, were present at this hui. Um, we've held a follow-up hui this year called Funding for Equity. And this time we gave our funders, some of our major funders who are listening and creating more innovative approaches and making change um, to have a platform to share what they're up to and what that change is looking like. And we had speakers such as um, Helen Lehi from Tipitakitanga and like Desiree Mahi from Tipuni Kokiri were among those who spoke at this hui. And again, this was about bringing everyone into the same room um, to speak from grass, our grassroots community members and neighbourhood groups through to um, senior managers and our local MPs, all sharing kai together and exploring these issues together. So we keep the conversation alive. We keep going. We've held another hui on Zoom this time um, to look at what next, how to deepen this process, how to really bring, so now we know what's um, what themes are important, but we need to think about those practical and systemic things that need to happen to bring about this change. And so these are the themes at the moment that we're really trying to deepen and to take further and working across several different platforms um, to do so. And probably another reports in this one, um, but what we, what I really just like to reflect on, and I'm trying to keep it within my five minutes and I probably haven't succeeded, but I think is just our approach as a network um, in terms of what we're trying to, the how of what we're doing. And, you know, at the core of that is about for us is always elevating community voice. Um, and in that we are trying to prioritize the voices and the stories of Māori and Pacifica. Um, and the kaupapa really does disrupt power relationships, like rather than the traditional community groups go with their hands out to funders, we are inviting funders to our table and we're setting the tone of the conversation of the corridor. Um, and yet at the same time as disrupting the power relationships, we're also trying to really dismantle this idea of them and us because funders are both systems and people and those people live in our communities and we have a stake. We all have a stake in seeing um, our communities flourish and thrive. So um, dis dismantling some of that polarization but also, and through that, creating space for dialogue. Um, and through all this, we really care for the relationships because we've got to be the change we wanna see. And so we take time and care with the relationships that we have with funders as we really um, push and try and move systems towards change. And manakitaka, we treat everyone well, and we always have a kai unless we're on Zoom. Um, and yeah, I think the other successful part of our community builders network is that we're quite nimble. We have no legal structure. Um, there's no boss, we're all volunteers. And so we're really hard to pin down. So, um, so we can sort of, yeah, 
push the envelope a little. So that's that's the that's just the key insights about what's working for us here in Otipoti. So uh Kamahinui Kia Koto. Kia ora. Thank you, my friend. It's always just humbling to hear all the work you do, Anna. And yeah, I've had the pleasure of working with you and alongside you so many times. So it's just great to hear from you every time. And um, yeah, I think a lot of the people in this like Zoom and hopefully the ones who will see it later will agree that although this research was limited to Dunedin and done in Dunedin, it's an issue that reflects widely across the country and okay. worldwide, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Anna. Our third speaker is Kodrian, um, who also part of founder of Voice of Aroha, who we'll be talking about today. Works at Victoria University to represent uh, former refugees and migrant young students. Um, works with change makers and a community advocate. Any pretty much any community group meeting regarding migrants, former refugees, Kodrian is there and just doing all the great work. Um, so please welcome uh, Kodrin. Kodrin, over to you. Uh, kia ora, kia ora. Thank you, Sahar and kia ora. Koto, everyone. It's a pleasure to me to be here today. So thank you for the invite and speaking today to those lovely people who are present today. So my name is Kodrian Ishai. And myself, I come to, uh, reunited with my family in 2018 to New Zealand. So my family uh, come to New Zealand in 2014. I will talk today about voice of Aroha. Like Zaha said, that we, everyone, I think in this room, we may hold different hats, but that's the, the natural when you work with communities, that's where to be. And I think that's the healthy things to connect all your rules into serving the community members. That's what we do at Voice of Aroha. Also, it's another part of my hat, which is voluntarily, I do it. Voice of Aroha, you may ask, why this? Because voice is the first things before doing anything is kind of you need to listen to the people you need to listen to communities to their perspective to need then we start working about the projects and what they want to do you can't design something do it something without listening to the people if they really want it if they are really had voice of Araha, it's come out with too many gaps and challenge I saw it through my journey when I settled in New Zealand and then when the opportunities come then I found okay this is a great opportunity so we can speak up we can see when I kind of come up with the idea it was a bit say ah who will listen to this show what they will listen but it's grow a lot and uh, we kind of impacted in somehow but we are still learning and going more it's a voiceover, what is what we do is a radio show, but now we are more than radio show. It's a bit complex, but you will understand if you listen to our episodes, what we talk about, and when you see our social media, what we share about, who we support and how we work, then you see that we are not just radio show, we interview people, we share the stories, and also we support that kind of good initiatives happening in a community. So when those organizations, nonprofit sectors doing great things, a lot of people and others, they don't know how to reach out or how to connect. So we bring those people into the show to share their mahi and to also connect people to those kind of good workers there. Because currently I, I found, found that a lot of initiative organizations doing great job in the community, but they don't know how to reach the community or community reach to them. So we find the media telling those stories, sharing those mahi, this initiative is another way to kind of open the access to them. Another thing, Voice of Foroha, it's come, who are they? Voice of Foroha is a group of former refugees and migrant Kiwi Maori descents who we all seven members, we come together. One of them, he's here, Louis Perez, he's a great one. And we come together, kind of, we are all in a youth age group in a base that we want to share our perspective on issues and topics. Because refugee communities, a lot of them, you don't hear really what, despite the mainstream in the media, they can show you one side of a story. So we decide to show to, to share and create this platform safely to share other side of the story. Because when they resettle in, it's not just the journey how they come in, there is some others what they brought with them from a culture, from a things and the other things they do here. There's a lot of success stories, a lot of people doing great mahi, but this is kind of in the mainstream media, 
is not focused on anything common in refugee. They go just directly show you the come and show you this kind of thing. So we decided as a community, we are calling ourselves as a community media so that we can bring those stories up and change the narrative towards refugees. Because this, we faced a lot, a lot of issues in employment, a lot of issues in towards the identity of refugees. It's become this, but now we created this safe platform to say, I am a refugee. I'm not afraid to say this, which is a label that we, when we, our backgrounds, we did not choose to have this label to put in our name, but it become identity. But when we see it's become a challenge for us, for instance, finding work, we say, no, we have to change this. We have to change this, that we are also very, we come up with the skills. So now I'm um, probably to say that this is refugees become part of a journey, but this, this is not just me. You have to ask about what other things I bring with me, what other things I come with my culture and how I come contributing to the society that we are all living together here. And you open it the home, the door, but we have also responsibilities, duties together to build. So Voice of Roja is from not just radio show, it's growing to be more holding events and helping other partners and consulting into what issues and we connect people to uh, people to organization and uh, agencies from government as well just we because and we one thing to remember voice of Allah is not there to speak on behalf of whole community but the team who are there the people who are there, they are from different backgrounds different communities so when we speak we, we put our perspective only individually like where I come from. For instance, I come, my background is from Iraq, a Syrian indigenous people of Iraq. We can, well, I have another member who's from Iraq. She can speak on that perspective on her, the background she come from. Just to make sure about this, because why? Because voice of our, we carry about the representation of the voice to be heard, everyone, wherever you come from, it's important. You have a right, you have a space, you are included to put your perspective wherever you are from, that voice need to be heard. If it's yes or no, it should be heard. Because if no, it's very healthy and everyone is saying yes, agree, that's not healthy. It should be so fine, that's no. And we develop the ways, the common things. Aroha, why Aroha? Because we are there to put the positive narrative about our backgrounds on those society or this country that we are calling it, Aotearoa to build it together. Because right, we come here, but we are also, we feel like a part as individuals and citizens in this country to grow. So we have a duty we are giving back to the community. And I, I, there was one panel I liked uh, one professor say, that refugees like, we've been hosted by the community, but now this platform, Voice of Roja, we are hosting a Kiwi, a Pakia and others peoples to come to the platform. So we become hosting people to our platform to space. Just we are exchanging the, the balance of this to say that we are all here, we can help to this country and to contribute more. A few more, moreover, talking about the vision of for us is more about looking for the inclusive society for Aotearoa. The inclusivity will be achieved in one way that you make sure a new team, a new table that does voice of those communities to be heard. And it's, I think it's just a, because we've emphasized on, on a voice is very simple rights. You just to make them heard what this community is here and these communities are here. So this is our mission is that kind, this voice is to be reached to communities. And from there you will see if you give that space freely in a safe space, you will see how much they can contribute in a different, they can shape the, the different perspective for your organization, for your communities. Can, you cannot judge anyone from whatever backgrounds they come if you don't give them a space at least to listen for them. So basically Voice of Allah is there to change that narrative toward refugee background communities and to help communities to uh, to reach our communities as well, because we also do the connections. We have a community leaders who we bring them to the show or connect them to make that kind of space space to talk. Then some people say, is it just talk? Well, if you listen first, that's the first step of changing a lot of things. 
we not we don't do just talk we also do the doy not just hui every single episode is like a hui for us there's a lot of talk conversations that's been shared as you can take a lot of notes if you listen to the thing episodes then in the doy part we do a lot of like i say the before events panel discussions and we don't do service we because we support the initiative and organizations. We are not there to become another organization. We are there to say this organization doing great job, people follow it, go access. This organization doing bad job, we criticize it in a, in a good way. We are also that way. Because if someone, some organization talk about communities and they take a big portfolio, no, we criticize them hardly because they don't represent everyone. So it's kind of like a media work we do. And uh, we have a lot of aims and things, but on 19 November, we just celebrated two years on being on air. And this project all is voluntarily. We are all seven volunteers who do that. And uh, please keep on watch our social media for season three that will come soon. And you will find different talks, different programs that will come in. And we would love to be in touch with all of you and great Mahi you're doing in community. This is Voice of Raha when you hear us mostly now refugee, but it's inclusive, everyone. And like I said, remember that we are here all to work together to build a beautiful Aotearoa. Uh, yeah, I just tried to summarize it in a, those kind of minute, five minutes. I think I passed five minutes. Thank you so much for your time. I'm glad that I was part of this. Thank you, Saha and the team. Cheers. Thank you, Kodrian. And yeah, you've touched upon a lot of really important topics, and especially in giving a voice to former refugees who usually have to advocate for themselves with language barriers, culture barriers, and a lot of these. So you doing this work is, I'm sure, goes a long way. Uh, so thank you. Um, our fourth speakers, our fourth and fifth speakers, um, are Vai and Michelle. I've heard about Vai through uh, Rangatahi Gener Regeneration Program, which Aratayohi, I think, sponsored over the last year or so. And I got the chance to attend one of their workshops at the Involve Conference, and I was just blown away um, by the work and just the leadership by the young people involved in that program. So really looking forward to hear what you have to say, Vai and Michelle, and looking forward to looking about and hearing about all your mahi. Over oh, to you. Thank you, Saka. Um, I'm just going to share, so just let me know if you can see this, and then I'm like, how do I work this? Yes, it's working. Okay, is that full screen? Am I full screened? Okay, kia ora tato. Uh, <clears throat> no potakia ho, heri tene no ngati rangi nui ngapuhi te rarua ma tatua hoki. Uh, no vaya koko leaf toku ingoa. Uh, kia ora no, my name is Vai. I hail from uh, the beautiful Tauranga Moana up north and a place that I call home and is very uh, close to my heart is Opotiki. Uh, I'm 22 years old. I work for Opotiki College and also for Arataiohi. Um, and I'm just going to pass the rako over to my miti over here. Kia ora tato, ko Michelle Rangiakua Ho, aka Miss, no Opotiki Ho, ko Tuhoi, Tuwhare Tonga Iwi. So kia ora whano, my name's Michelle or Miss, what my friends call me. Born and raised in Opotiki, but I fuck up it back to Tuhoi. And yeah, I'm really excited to be here and present to you. I'm quite nervous. <laughs> it's her first ever time. Um, so yeah, it's it's really cool to, and I'm really blessed to be able to do this with my best friend. Um, but we'll just jam right into it. So um, cool. So a little bit about what I get up to. Um, as I said, first off, I am a part of the Rangatahi Regeneration Upu, uh, which sits under Arataiohi. So what are we? We are a group of six Rangatahi from all around the Motu, from right up north all the way down to, um, I was going to say Dunedin, uh, down to 
Invercargill, um, and we've been brought together <clears throat> to basically push the kaupapa of mana taiohi. Uh, we are rangatahi who are currently out there serving rangatahi in some shape or form as well. Uh, we do this by travelling around the motu and delivering mana enhancing ways to work with our rangatahi, which is called mana taiohi. Uh, we've delivered to NGOs, Oranga Tamariki, uh, our youth sector communities uh, in different parts of the motu, and also delivered at the Involve conference. Um, which leads me to my next kaupapa. So another kaupapa I'm so proud to be a part of, and it's really close to my ngako, is the Cake Detective Charitable Trust. Um, I'm currently a board member for them, and basically what we do is we ensure that rangata rangatahi and tamariki and waikato, uh, who come from any form of hardship, whether it's being in state care, to being a refugee, or even our tamariki who are currently going through cancer and, or in hospice in some shape or form, that if there's one day in their life that they deserve to be happy, it's their birthday. Um, and so what we do is that we're so blessed to be able to give beautiful, um, high quality cakes to them for free, uh, as our, uh, our service is uh, basically through donations. So yeah, very blessed to be able to be a part of that and push that kaupapa as well. And lastly, um, I've recently moved home. So legit for four weeks, I've been in a port uh, And I currently work as the lead HPR navigator for the college. Um, and the same, the contract that I'm currently under is also a contract that Michelle's under as well. Uh, my job currently entails developing the mentoring pathway for the kura um, to help engage our tawira and increase their attendance and also ultimately make them more motivated to attend kura um, and just, yeah, like that really good uh, emotive stuff with our rangatahi because it's not there at the moment in our hapuri. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'm going to chuck the rako to miss now. Cool, awesome kaupapa there. So some of the things that I get involved with here in Oportiki, and that's just oh, sorry. Oh, cool, so community event support. Just recently we've had the whole vaccination pump out. So I've mm. been involved with a lot of pop-ups, drive-throughs, block parties. And what I've noticed is just about giving our whanau that, that space where they feel they can express their concerns, they feel safe, they don't feel judged, and it's a safe environment mm. for them. Other kind of community events that we've done are whānau workshops. We work with whānau, we do rongoa making, bath salt makings, awesome. and just holistic approaches to their well-being and high water. Um, mm. Other things such as holiday programs. So yeah, that's another hat I wear in the community supporting with all those kind of events. One that's helped me in my personal journey is Ihikura Gym. I volunteered two years ago and I haven't left. And by volunteering, I'm able to utilize this gym and share with all my whanau rangatahi. And I bring them in. We do workouts, but we also focus on our mental well-being as well. Mm. So it's really awesome to be able to give our whanau and rangatahi experiences that are positive. Um, also experiences within the community where they feel a part of something mm. else, give them those positive experiences. And my main role currently within Fakati Whananga Trust, our organisation, is Tūhono Mentoring. So that's a service, a one-on-one -on -one mentoring service that we deliver. I am the HPR lead coordinator. So that's some of the mahi I do. And what our focus is, is getting non-engaged rangatahi that aren't in employment or education into educational employment, just to reduce the risk of them being at long-term mm. unemployment. So as you may have noticed that me and Bai actually come under the same contract as Hippo Tamarangatai, but we're going to speak more on that on our mm. next slide. So um, same contract, but different organisations, uh, which leads us to collaborative work uh, working. So uh, in the past, our contracts have run really silo, um, and which is really weird because we're a very small community and we don't have many services. So this, since I've been back, me and Michelle have been working really closely to kind of um, bring some synergy to our contracts and utilize the pockets where I lack and then where she lacks and we can pick up each other. Um, so what does that look like? Cool. So one example of this is where we we work with different rangatai who can't come under us due to contract expectations and our criteria. So what we kind of do is we speak to each other. We say, hey, you know, look, we've got this one young people. I think you would be able to help them a lot. Do you think you can? And that's where we just start collaborating, mm. working together. And one example of this is we had a young wahine come to vie with some concerns. Vai helped where she could, but she, she just 
identified these mm. other concerns and social needs that she couldn't help. So she came to me, let me know, and I was able to think of three things that would have really mm. supported her. So I took her to the food bank. I took her to get a work grant so that she could get funding to help with her employment. I was able to get her a defensive driving course, just all those social needs that I wasn't able to get just due to, you know, her contract expectations and what she her matauranga was only mm. recently moving into our mm. and coming back home. So it's just working like that to complement each other and give our rangatai as much support as we can. Mm. So just because I know we've hit the seven minute mark, um, we'll just quickly give you our moi moi uh, um, of working together. As I said, so blessed to be able to share the space with my meti over here. Um, some things that we want to be at the forefront going forward in our hapuri, um is kind of uh, pulling these ideas to the people that hold powerful positions in our community, like our mayors and the people that uh, work with youth. So uh, one thing that I would really love for our community is uh, a YOS, a youth one-stop shop or some sort of complex. At the moment, Oportiki is known as a low socioeconomic town, um, homicide capital, uh, which is just, it's not the tucky and there's not many opportunities or spaces, safe spaces for our rangatahi here. So having one of those is something that I really wanna push Another thing is external supervision that doesn't exist here, yet we are dealing with some really critical, high complex rangatahi, tamariki in our community. So just pushing that and um, trying to bring some putia for our workers out there to get some external supervision as well. Yeah. Oh, and another one that we really want to um, highlight is our youth internships. So we really want to give our rangatahi the opportunity to actually work in these spaces because it's our rangatahi who are going to Get, uh, get involved and get yeah. among mm. all our rangatahi. They're the ones who know what they're going through and can relate better. And currently we have no funds to actually support these and invest in our rangatahi. And last but not least is our contract outcome. So within our roles, we identify that the social needs are not being met from our rangatahi. Mm. It's either you get them into employment or education or and that's, that's it. it. Mm. But then we identify all these other social needs, housing, food, mental, mental and well-being, yeah. all these different things that are pretty much stopping them from being able to meet mm. our outcomes. But we're still expected to try and cover all these social needs and put on a mm. second hat and become uh, counsellors and all social these other workers things. and things that we're not. So yeah, just yeah. So that's our moi moi. Um, but thank you for listening to our tea talk. Na mahi fano Thank you, Vine, Miss. And Miss, that was a pro time. Like, it's, you shouldn't just say it was your first time. You did amazing. Um, yeah, I come from the youth engagement space and just hearing you two talk and about all the amazing stuff you do is just uh, fascinating. So thank you. And thank you for joining us today. Um, yes, so our last but not least is Linda from Everybody Eats. Um, we're going to have Linda tell us more about what Everybody Eats does, the Kopapa behind this initiative, and then we're going to have kind of like a chat, Q&A, quick um, uh, fire, like um, about the work that she does. But just a reminder, we're going to be officially closing this space at one, but we're going to stay around for just a casual chat afterwards until about 1.30, so you're more than welcome to stay. Um, Linda. Please tell us about Everybody Eats and thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, kia ora koutou. Thank you so much for having me. I'm feeling quite overwhelmed to be in this space. So um, thank you. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself first. So um, I've always been involved in some form of community work. And I think probably like most of us, it starts and it snowballs. And no matter what space you find yourself in, um, you can't help but give. And so I've started out in education and hospitality and I've landed myself currently in a new position um, called Everybody Eats. Uh, Everybody Eats is very established in Auckland but is um, for, for the last four years, but is very much in its early stages here in Wellington. Um, our mission is to reduce food waste, address food poverty and reaching out to those in, in social um, isolation. And I guess, you know, right now in times of COVID, our response is very much needed. Uh, like I said, we're in our early stages. We've only just hit one year and um, we're only going three nights a week. Uh, how we do this is 
We're a charity with a pay as you feel dining concept. So how this sort of works is we turn food that would otherwise go to waste and we turn it into this delicious three course um, restaurant quality meal. Um, and on any given night, we have around 20, last night we had about 20 volunteers. Um, it's this gorgeous space. I'm, I'm really passionate about what we're doing. If anything, I wish we could be doing it seven nights a week. Um, but it, yeah, like I said, it's this gorgeous place. You know, at the moment in New Zealand, one third of our food is, is going to the landfill. And, and yet we have one in six people experiencing food poverty and it just doesn't quite make sense does it and that's a statistic that was pre-COVID so you can only imagine how 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 hard it is getting for people and I think you know one of the things with COVID which has really thrown people into social um, isolation and and pushing them you know people to their limits and I think I'm very much, you know, there's no PowerPoint from me. Um, I'm very much on the floor with the people and connecting with them. And, and yeah, I think as much as I've been involved in the community, you know, I've worked in prisons, I've worked in education and health, and I think I know what's going on. I can't help but continually get surprised about how hard it is getting for people. And so the beautiful thing about Everybody Eats is we are not a soup kitchen. We are a restaurant, so we bring these two sides of, of the way life can be at the moment, and we bring them together, and it's a really humbling experience. I mean, not all of us have that um, ability to go around a dining room table and talk and connect and have people that really care about us, so what I see in, in our space is really heartwarming. I think last night I said to one of our volunteers, we're like this crazy little family. We, um, you know, we know what that, that uncle over there that normally talks too much at the dinner table, that auntie over there that doesn't like spicy food. So in our own way, we see the same faces, you know, three nights a week. Um, currently in Wellington, our soup kitchen is just running takeaway meals for the lunch service so we are catering three nights a week for dinner um I think another thing about not being as as established as as in Wellington as as you guys are is that we I have learned to reach out to other people in in our community so there's a place around the corner called the free store and we've really hooked up and trying to support the community at the moment um, the vax certificates coming in has really been a curveball because we are going to only have people come in who are vaccinated, um, but we are going to be offering takeaway meals for these people. So we've hooked up with the free store this week and we've got a little hub going. You know, there's many of our customers don't have a cell phone, a email address, um, a form of ID. So we're just really getting down there with the people um, and helping them get those. And, it, and it actually, for me, it's been hard to find some of this information. So you can only imagine how hard it is for them. So yeah, this week, like tonight, I'm going to um, be helping some of our people get um, get their vac certs um, and make things more accessible for them. And again, if they're not vaccinated, again, instead of creating that line where, or barrier, we're going to be um, having takeaway meals for them next week. But also we've um, connected with ECTA who um, if they get vaccinated they get a food voucher for everybody eats um, so a lot of us within the community I think we're learning right now to to really lean and support on each other um, when resources aren't terribly you know very high but yeah so that's a little bit about who we are and what we do um, yeah I don't know what yeah, else I so I'm, I'm embarrassed to say this. I still haven't been, but one of my friends, uh, Maddie Mitchell, is one of your volunteers. And oh, she just right. wouldn't stop talking about how great it is. So I, I will make it. Um, I just have one question for you. Like, what was maybe the one moment in all of your time with Everybody Eats that just stands out every time you kind of like explain to people why you do what you do? Like one of the best <laughs> moments, yeah. In all honesty, there are so many magical moments. It really is like, I think, you know, when you go do a job and you do your hours, I know I do above and beyond my hours because I love it so much and I'm so passionate about it. And it gives me so much joy. And the fact that I'm working with, 
you know, I work with these volunteers that really want to be there, like they're pumped, you know, they are happy to be in this workplace and they share that energy with me. Um, and there's just so many special moments, you know, we are, we are, we do need koha, but you know, everyone in some way is in the capacity to give. Um, this week I've been given a cabbage, a bag of, you know, parsley literally thrown at me. I've had offers of live music instead of, you know, instead of koha, I've had a lovely lady come in and offer to do our flower arrangements every um, Sunday, you know, for, for the tables. And so I think this is the thing, you know, when we talk about community, everyone is in the capacity to give and that is humbling and it is about respect and dignity. There's an enormous sense of manaki tanga as soon as you come in. Um, you see the relationships at the table. You know, you will sit next to someone who you normally wouldn't meet in everyday life and you have these incredible conversations, you know, a real sense of ako again, because you're teaching and learning. And while you might not feel you're in the capacity to give to someone, you actually are. And I think even for me right now, it's just every single night. I, it just opens my mind up to even more and more and the barriers that are there for people and mental health issues are massive at the moment. Um, some incredibly you know, intelligent people who are broken and it has stopped them from, from working and keeping a job. And actually just one of my patrons who I'm really concerned about at the moment, um, I spoke to a health practitioner and he's like, you know, there's no, you know, like if you're only eating three nights a week, a decent meal, where's the nourishment going to come from, you know, the sleeping arrangements. So I think that's the thing. While our mission might be these few things, it's like a ripple effect, doesn't it? It just keeps going and going. And sometimes I remind, need to remind myself where I talk to our founder, Nick, about like, oh, we're a restaurant, we're a restaurant, but you can't help but have that social worker aspect pull it out, um, worker pulled out of you so yeah I love what I do and I just wish we could do it seven nights a week but hey. yeah no but, and like as you mentioned I feel like the minute people see the good work and the intentions and just the love behind it that's when people usually rally up and help in any way they can and sometimes it's live music which I love and sometimes it's a bag of food or yeah so it's it's just good to see this we'll continue this conversation just yeah. we're gonna put this to like an official close I'm going to ask Rania if you can please uh, share the link to the survey in the chat. Uh, it's just a one minute survey about how you thought of this webinar, what you'd like us to add in terms of topics next year, because we do these in kind of like a um, seasonal kind of like series. So we've got the spring, summer coming up and we'll just keep them um, coming. So please let us know if there is any specific topic that you'd want to see and stick around so we can ask these questions that you have and talk more about them. I'm just gonna check if Vi is still here. Yes, Vi is still here. Yeah, do you mind please closing us with the karakia and then we'll go into the casual part of the day. Thank you. Katie Pye, all right. Mino tato, kia to, kia tato katoa, te ato whai o tō tato ara ki, au karaiti me te aroha o te atua, me te whiwhinga tahitanga, ki te wairua tapu, ake ake, amene. Amene.